Aegir, a fierce old Jotun, was lord of the stormy seas. His hall was far out in the ocean, surrounded by white walls of sea foam. His wife, Ran, was an evil ogress, who killed sailors by wrecking their ships, and then gathered the gold from the wrecked ships to pile on her hearth. Aegir's daughters weren't very nice either. They loved to ride on the waves, and they would laughingly overturn ships so that their mother might have more gold to pile on her hearth. Aegir was friendly with the Aesir. He was a frequent and welcome visitor. But one day the Aesir decided that it was Aegir's turn to hold a feast for them, and Thor carried the message to him. You better start baking and brewing now, Thor scowled at him. Aegir couldn't say no, so he stalled and he squirmed and he finally replied, I don't have a cauldron big enough to brew enough mead for so many honored guests. If you can find one, I will be more than happy to hold a feast for you. I will, said Thor and he returned to Asgard. Now, Aegir knew that there was only one cauldron big enough, and that was owned by the giant Hymir, and he wouldn't willingly share it with the Aesir. When Thor arrived back at Asgard, his half-brother, Tyr, who was Hymir's grandson, told him that he remembered seeing just such a cauldron hanging in his grandfather's hall. Let us go together. Perhaps I can talk him into loaning it to us. Together they set out, and when they reached the hall, Hymir's wife, an ugly hag with nine hundred heads, blocked the entrance. But her daughter, Tyr's beautiful and kind mother, came and let them in. After warmly greeting her son, she asked the reason for the visit. She was quite distraught when she found out the reason. He will never agree, but for now, hurry, hide behind a pillar. The old one will be here soon, and he hates strangers. Now Thor hated to hide from the Jotun, but he had no choice. As soon as they were hidden, Heimer stormed into the room covered with ice. Come, father, sit by the fire. Tyr's mother said, I have a pleasant surprise for you. Your grandson and his kinsman Thor have come to visit you. Now this was far from being a pleasant surprise. It was a downright unwelcome one. But even Hymir had to observe the laws of hospitality. As Tyr and Thor stepped out from behind the pillar, he leapt to his feet and glared in their direction. His glare shattered the pillar, breaking the crossbeam, and all his cauldrons fell to the ground. All broke except for one, the largest. But he could do nothing more than glare and growl as they politely greeted him. He had three oxen cooked for them. Thor ate two of them. You can eat a man-sized meal, he said to Thor. If you want to eat again tomorrow, tomorrow morning, let us go whale fishing. Thor agreed, and they set out early the next morning. They rowed out where no land could be seen, and they threw out their fishing lines. Soon Hymir had two whales wriggling on his hook, and he pulled them into the boat. Thor's hook was baited with a steer, and it sank to the ocean bottom. Suddenly the sea began to boil and bubble and there was a huge jerk on the line, slamming Thor against the boat. He stood up and pulled with all his strength, and what did he find at the end of his line? The mighty Midgard serpent. Thor and the serpent glared at each other for a second, then Thor threw his hammer. The serpent howled in pain, shaking the entire earth. Before Thor could get another hit in, Hymir, who was terrified, cut the fishing line, and the serpent went back to the bottom of the sea. Thor was very angry, and they rowed back in silence. 
When they landed, Thor threw both whales over his shoulder and walked silently. <clears throat> when they landed, Thor threw both whales over his shoulder and marched silently back to the hall. That evening after the feast, Tyr asked for the cauldron, adding, The feats of the mighty Thor have earned it. Hymir scowled. Doesn't take all that much strength to row a little bit and to carry a couple of whales a short distance. But if he can break my crystal goblet, then you can have the cauldron. But I don't think he has the strength to do so. Thor accepted the challenge. He grabbed the goblet and he threw it against one of the pillars. It went right through the pillar, shattering the pillar, but the glass wasn't scratched. Tyr's mother whispered into Thor's ear, Throw it at Hymir's head. Nothing is harder than his head. Thor grabbed the goblet and he threw it with all his might, and it shattered into a thousand splinters when it hit Hymir's head. Hymir was very distraught. He had lost not only his precious goblet, but his largest cauldron. Thor swung the cauldron over his head and walked out with Tyr following. The cauldron was so heavy that even Thor had trouble carrying it. As they went on their way, they heard noises behind them. Turning around, they saw Hymir at the head of an enormous army of Jotuns and trolls quickly closing in. Thor set the cauldron down and he threw his hammer again and again until he had made an end of Hymir and his army. Picking up the cauldron, they went on their way. When Aegir saw the cauldron, he kept his word he didn't have a choice. He brewed mead and he prepared a huge feast for the Aesir. Shimmering gold on the hearth lit up the hall, food and drink were plentiful, and even Aegir enjoyed himself so much that he promised the Aesir that he would hold a feast for them every year.